Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending my talk. I'm Christian. I am going to give an update on the management framework, as um, Keith just uh, described. Um, so um, for some of you, this might sound familiar, and that is correct. I, I was here last year um, also talking about this framework in an earlier sort of uh, incarnation. Um, there's been a bunch of work on this in the past year. And uh, for those of you not familiar with this at all, there is a bit of context. So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to establish modern cluster management for Zeek. And those of you who were in the training yesterday or who are currently running larger clusters know cluster management in Zeek via Zeek Control, which is a tool that's been you know, around for many years and which pretty much harkens back to the era where if you wanted to use Zeek in a multi-core environment, you literally had to run multiple physical machines. And so its model is very different from how you would build cluster management today. Its, its model is basically that it is a tool that, that goes out and logs into all of the machines involved and then basically runs commands to do its job. So stuff like SSH and rsync are, are key to its functionality. Um, and so, a good way to think of it is that pretty much all of what it does is external to Zeek. It's not actually using Zeek itself. It just makes, you know, it makes Zeek do things via configuration and so forth. And so the way to think of it is that its model is perhaps a little dated, but it's really featureful and it's solid because it's what's been in use for, for such a long time. And the thinking that we had here was that what if we could turn this sort of upside down and turn Zeek itself into the provider of this service model. So we have events in Zeek that you can pretty much use for anything. So why not use eventing for basically, you know, transaction style request response pairs among the entities involved. And we could make the whole thing a little more container friendly if things like naming and so forth to find other things are just a, a non-issue. And we conveniently have an existing framework in Zeek that has so far mostly been used sort of for tinkering, maybe a little bit called the supervisor, which already lets you um, fork off, you know, new Zeek processes to do some sort of process um, and so there are so, sort of you know, solid building blocks here, and it's just a matter of sort of tying it all together and building this new framework on top of it. And so the bottom point here is really important. So, so we have sort of Z control as a, as a North Star. Its, its functionality is, is not an explicit goal to achieve identically in this new framework, but it's certainly a guideline. It would be nice if we had most of the functionality that it provides also in this new framework. So meet the management framework. One of the biggest changes since last year is that it has a new name. <laughs> and uh, it lives in policy frameworks management for those who are you know, inclined to look at the code. Uh, the fact that it's in, in policy reflects that it is not yet a core framework uh, of the Zeek distribution. All the stuff in uh, policy is basically optional stuff that you can load in. Um, but it is currently fully contained there. There is really, except for a client that I'll get to in a moment, no other thing um, that is external to Zeek. Um, so you're probably wondering about the architecture, and we have some new diagrams. <laughs> um, so this is the architecture in its most sort of segregated. So there are three big components, and I'll, I'll start at the bottom, where the idea is that you have um, an admin console, an admin system, where you run a command line interface. There is one called Zeek Client that ships with Zeek as of Zeek 5. So if you have that installed and you're curious, you can poke around right now and you'll find it. Um, and you use that to connect to what we call the controller. So in the top right here, there's a controller system. Uh, you can see the, the little um, invocation up here that is basically how you would launch that. Um, that gets created via the supervisor and that is sort of the, the hub for this framework, the hub for what it means to have a controller, I'm sorry, a, a, a cluster running in this in the system and that is stateful, understands the configuration of the system and, and so forth. And the controller in turn interacts with the individual cluster systems. We call them uh, agents. Agents are uh, basically the Zeek entity that controls an instance of Zeek nodes, where an instance is basically a set of what you traditionally know as Zeek cluster nodes. So they're the green stuff up there in the, in the top left. So managers, workers, and, and so forth. And so when the client issues commands, it basically you know, tells the controller to do a certain thing. The controller does that. Sometimes it can respond directly. Sometimes it has to go out to all of the agents, collect information from those instances, get that back, and relay that back to the client. And this is sort of the, 
you know, the most detailed way you can look at this architecture. In practice, you can run those three you know, elements in, in many different combinations. And perhaps the easiest one to sort of tinker with and explore the whole thing is what we call an all-in-one system, where you basically just combine the agent and the controller into one Zeek invocation, and they otherwise function exactly the same way. They're still both running. You can still use your client to connect to them. You've just made a lot of the functionality local to this, this one system. And depending on how you're uh, you know, planning to, to explore this or deploy it, you can basically sort of mix and match things in a way that works for you. So the current status, and this is as of Zeek 5, like I said, so Zeek 5.0 and also very soon in 5.1, is the following, so meet the client. Uh, if you've used some of our tooling, then this might look a little familiar. This is sort of, you know, uh, uh, structured like ZKG, also a little bit like Z client, uh, sorry, <laughs> Z control, and uh, it's a typical command line tool. Like you can, you know, give it a config file. It has its sort of predefined uh, configuration. You can tell it to connect to a certain controller, and then it has a suite of commands that you can issue to do things with your cluster, such as deploy configurations, um, check in on nodes, and and so forth. And so, what's the status right now? So the status is that there is solid support for what we call single host clusters. So things work pretty well as long as you run everything on one machine right now. If you really know what you're doing, <laughs> you, you can already spread it out across machines and so forth, but there are caveats in there that um, we think are sort of challenging enough that we don't want to officially go there yet and sort of we'll, we'll iterate on that a little bit more. But so deploying, checking in on, and managing cluster nodes works. There is a notion of persistence in the controller, so you can shut things down, you can bring things back up, and the cluster reestablishes itself. We do that with um, broker data stores, which has been really fun. This was the first time, at least, that I used them, and they've been working great for this. A low transaction rate you know, storage. There is some resilience built into this via the supervisor, because the supervisor handily already uh, restarts nodes that you know crash or you know get stopped. Um, and it comes currently with a pre-configured approach for doing log rotation and archival, and this is basically just something that seemed to make sense to mostly Robin and I, who work very closely on this together, um, and where we're particularly curious to see feedback, um, because the, the structure is a little different from how it's worked historically, and we think of it as mainly sort of maybe cleaning things up a little bit where we use things in the past in ways that, that aren't technically super correct. So, um, What's an example? For example, we, we used to put some stuff in the spool folder that isn't technically spool. Like the, the definition of a spool is that something goes in there, gets parked, and gets taken back out again, right? So we're reducing it to this right now, hopefully. Um, so the news there is that basically every node that runs in the cluster runs under var lib and has you know its own storage space for whatever state it needs to write out to disk, um, including logs in its sort of you know first uh, incarnation. <laughs> Uh, that then get rotated, rotated out into this um, directory in the spool, and from there get archived into uh, a directory under logs that looks familiar to you guys if you've done this before with a with a date stamp sort of folder. So um, you're probably curious about a specific feature comparison to current Z control. So I uh, I tried to give this a shot. We have a much more detailed version of this in a spreadsheet that isn't you know suitable for presentation, <laughs> but is available upon request. It needs a little uh, modernization. But um, you can see here sort of where we're going. So there is a certain subset of features that are basically there in both environments. So configuration deployment, config validation, so where you check properties of the, the configuration for you know correctness and so forth is there in both. You can, in both environments, check the status of the nodes that are currently running. In both environments, you can retrieve a global ID and see, you know, what is in that table, what is the, the value of a certain variable, and then is where the, the differences hit. So some of them are small and some of them are big. Um, oops, excuse me. So um, node restart is there in both environments. Um, there is no explicit node stop and start right now. Um, this is clearly too handy to, uh, to have in certain situations, so we'll almost certainly add that in. Uh, it's just an iteration over the, the commands that are supported, but otherwise no biggie. 
Um, Multi-host clusters, this is the thing that is basically tricky right now. And just to elaborate on that a little bit, if you look at the cluster framework right now and how it defines the nodes that exist, then that is tied to IP addresses. And in modern environments, IP addresses are not really sort of a uh, primary way of identifying other things. This is usually done by naming. So there is a plan here to make a pass over all of that stuff to make it work more, more seamlessly so that you don't have to think about what are the IP addresses of the stuff involved here. Um, so once we have that and then build a little bit of sort of routine on top of that, then that should be checked. And the biggie, uh, where I think the difference is, is you know, really uh, starkest, is um, script customization, where we just have two very different approaches right now. Where in Z-Control, you have a uh, actually very handy feature where you can locally configure what you want Zeek to look like and then deploy basically just copies that whole thing out there and, and makes that run on all of the nodes involved. And so this is easy for Zeek control because there's rsync, but in this new framework doesn't immediately apply because the equivalent of rsync is not there. Um, and so what you can currently do is you can configure what each individual node in the cluster will run in terms of scripts that are already on that system, but you cannot get new scripts to show up on those nodes. So this is something that we're looking into. We'll see what we have to do there. Um, there are questions, I think, about the extent to which this model should apply in the future, but it certainly could. Um, and then we touched some stuff that is um, really only in Z-Control. Housekeeping is one. There is this um, Z-Control cron command, right, where it can sort of check in on things and see are there, are there stale logs, cl uh, clean that stuff up, and so forth. There is no equivalent of that right now. There is the ability uh, to retrieve statistics, um, which is technically also very doable and can certainly be added, but is not there right now. Um, and there's crash reporting, which, um, you know, arguably should be a green check for Z-Control because it does provide it, but it does only provide it if it's via GDB and LLDB and if you create cores, uh, core files on the systems involved. So again, this is sort of a, a question of like, do we want to invoke external stuff? Do we want to leave this up to, to system level configuration uh, where you deploy Zeek? Um, depends on the use case, I think, but could potentially be added. And then the last point here, uh, to make this sort of you know exciting is that what we have in the management framework that we do not have in Z-Control is an API. So you can have many things talking to this because it's just an event-based uh, API that we think enables a bunch and just to throw out a couple things, like we could tap into events that happen into, in, the, in the cluster. This is just broker, right? So you can say, yep, certain types of events are now forwarded, so you could make that accessible. You could do log tap, like why not just in your client say, let me just tap into the logs real quick and see, like, yep, they're getting produced, they're not getting produced, stuff like that. Um, you could write other clients, um, there's nothing that stops you from you know, an alternative to Zeek client, which is just sort of the default that we provide. I just mentioned this, this WebSocket stuff in the other uh, uh, presentation, and so like, technically I think it should be totally fine to use a web client, um, like a browser, to talk to a controller in the future if you sort of you know, do it right. Um, but at least I think that's all, that's all in the cards. I wanted to touch on the test suite real quick. Um, because I think it's worth mentioning because it works a little differently from how we've been doing testing in most other contexts. So there's a new test suite. You don't get it automatically when you just pull down Zeek. It's one of the external test suites, which is a concept that we've had for a long time. For example, when testing involves you know, big PCAPs, stuff like that, where you basically have to explicitly clone via Git you know, an additional repo into the existing Zeek tree, and then it can run there. And that test suite is... Um, about 40 B tests. We still use B tests to, to drive the testing. This is our in-house uh, test driver. But the testing itself always happens via Docker Compose. So this means that for every test that runs, there are at least two containers that actually sort of bring up the stuff I just described and then issue commands. So they, you know, they, they will virtually all you know, run Z client, send off some commands, and then check the output generated by Z client, or um, actually hop onto the containers and check the state of the controller and agent, and so forth. And I'm sort of excited about this because it also gives us a way to add um, additional cl uh, sorry, cluster testing in the, in the future. So for the, for the current cluster framework, there is testing in the current Zeek test suite, but it's using B tests internal mechanisms to launch stuff in the background and so forth, and it's quite tedious to work with. So, so there's no doubt that, that Docker Compose for this particular stuff is, is probably the, 
the, the better solution. Um, so it's nice to be able to build on top of that. And this is running all the time right now. In fact, this runs every time we build a new Docker image. So if you've ever pulled those down, you've indirectly sort of benefited from this stuff running. Um, and if you want to check it out, um, go to that URL. The slides will be available, um, and it details how to do that. Um, there's, there's quite a bit of documentation there. All right, uh, demo time. So let's see here. First, I have gotten old, and I need readers now. <laughs> and let's see here. So I was basically just going to show you some of the stuff that um, I just described, what it looks like. This is actually the, uh, the, the training environment from yesterday. So um, the folks who were in the training will find this fairly familiar. I will probably only do a subset of this. We're pretty good on time. So the client, like I said, like if you have this uh, installed, there should be, if you have a few other things in place that we could talk about in person, uh, command line completion, you see that it sort of has that set of commands that I was showing you earlier. Um, you can take a look at the uh, settings it comes with um, because it can just sort of spit those out to you. Um, you see that there's a default no notion of where the controller uh, lives, which is just locally with a default port and so forth. So you're basically good to go and just use that. If you, if you want to customize things, there's a, there's a, a set command where, you know, if you tap things out, then you, you can sort of just see what these things are and, and, and overwrite them. So um, I'm going to, I'm basically going to launch this, this all in one solution that um, I described earlier. And so this is a long command. Uh, so I'm going to see if I get this right. So policy, frameworks, management, controller, and policy, frameworks, management, agent, right? And the dash J here is in order to enable the supervisor framework, which we need for this, because otherwise we don't have this infrastructure that can fork um, new processes. So this thing is now running there. And if you look, you know, with the right tools, you can see that there are some, um, like some ports, and that Zeek is doing stuff, and 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 so forth. Um, there is a there is a first command to try. So one of the the most basic ones is basically just check in with the controller, um, and report what instances are connected. And so we've we've created one agent, right? So there is one instance that can launch Zeek cluster nodes. So it should report that. And here, um, note that the output is JSON, and that is true for pretty much everything that um, Z client can report. So you can always pipe this into JQ or some such, and then you know process from there. Um, so let's deploy a configuration. And configurations are pretty basic right now. Uh, I'll point you guys at the documentation there. You can sort of put a lot of stuff in there. But for um, these examples, we'll just do some pretty basic stuff. Uh, there's a minimal cluster where you can really leave out almost everything. So you basically just have, you know, uh, uh, an ini style block for every node in the cluster. You have a manager, a logger, and a worker. Uh, you spell out the role or the type. You can say either, just like in Z control, this should be pretty familiar, and you give it an interface where you want to sniff in this case. And you can basically just deploy that. So I can say, see client, and there's a difference between just uploading a configuration so that the, the controller knows about it and also deploying it in the same, you know, in, in one go or basically doing them separately. In the interest of time, I'll just do them in one go. So I'll say deploy config and I'll give it this, this minimal config. And that should work and come back to me with, um, you know, according output. So every request that we fire off gets an ID, an, a, a transaction ID, and it gets labeled with that. So when it comes back, you know, that can be associated. And it also becomes basically an identifier of any configuration that we upload. So it's, it's running there. And so we see that those three things worked out. There's some automated naming going on. So the, the cryptic part is the, the name of the, the container that I'm in right now. And so since this worked, what we can do now is we can, we can check in on the running nodes. So, um, uh, there's uh, a, okay. First, let me um, let me show you um, that these things are actually there. Uh, P U, I think this is right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you can see, ignore the top part, but you can see at the bottom that there's a bunch of Zeek stuff running. So there's one root process. There's a stem, which is basically the thing that the supervisor uses to have a 
minimally configured Zeek node that, from which it can fork further processes. And you see that there's the agent, the controller, and now the three uh, new Zeek cluster nodes that we just created. And you wouldn't do this normally, of course, because you have to be local to this, so there's another command for that. So you can just say Zeek client and then say get nodes. And you basically get these, the, the, the same information just with a bit more detail. So for every node, it tells you, you know, what it's doing in, in, the, in the cluster. Is it a manager? Is it a logger? Um, what port is it on? What, what, what's the PID? And, and so forth. And so maybe to show you guys some stuff that I talked about earlier, going back here for a second. So if I, if I kill, kill off the worker, say, so I say goodbye. Then you know the supervisor complains a little bit, and then if I retrieve the nodes again, then you see that it's um, that it's back, right? So it got it got relaunched. So you can do that. And another thing I can show you is if I just shut the whole thing down, so now the whole tree is gone, right? So I can I can prove that. <laughs> uh, so if I bring it back up, then the cluster is back. Right, so it, it, it comes back up, so that stuff got persisted and, and, and brought back into memory. And maybe among the final things to show you uh, is what happens when things go wrong. So I can also uh, deploy something broken. So if I look at cluster error, it looks just like before, but I, you know, I give it an interface that most likely will not exist. In this case, definitely does not. So I say, I'll just type it out again. Uh, deploy config cluster, what was it called? Uh, error. And then this takes a little bit longer because for some you know, errors, things have to time out a little. You can say that I see that the, the supervisor is uh, unhappy down there. And you can see that in the report that I get back, it already tells me via standard error output, yep, that interface does not exist. So you get that, that output right there, which I think is, is quite handy. Um, all right, I'm, I'm a little short on time. There's more stuff that I could show you, like how to restart, how to retrieve the configuration. Actually, I can, I can do that real quick. So see client, if you just say uh, get config, so this only talks to the controller, then you get the deployed config back, and you can do that as JSON also. It's interesting because you see a little bit more of what was inferred in the, the minimal um, configuration earlier. There's nothing to just uh, shut down the whole thing right now, so you have to get uh, you have to get a little Unixy and just say, read this thing from standard in and do something like the empty configuration, and that deploys an empty cluster. It's gone. Okay. Demo concluded. Um, demo concluded. <laughs> uh, so next steps. So um, some of them I already touched. So for Z client, we're doing exactly the swip, uh, switch to WebSockets that I just described in the in the earlier presentation. But so so this is this is there and working already. And it's not just about the broker bindings because what this enables for people is that you can basically be on any system and just say via pip or whatever is your preferred you know, Python uh, toolchain, just install this package and it will just run there because it basically has no other dependencies or more specifically I should say no other dependencies that you cannot also install via pip, pip and that doesn't work currently for broker. So, so if the broker dependency itself is gone, that's a... a a big step forward because you, be, you gain a lot of flexibility. There's the support for multi-host clusters that is sort of pretty clear how to achieve, but we just need to do it. It'd be nice to close the gap to the Z control features, makes total sense. There is a, a nice bit about further embracing um, OS level service managers, so like systemd on, on a lot of Linuxes, for example, where um, I think we can do multiple things. The, the supervisor itself currently is not very exposed to the the plugin infrastructure, so we can we can allow it to do that, and then there are various ways to sort of hook things together a little bit more, so that when you use the system-based tools for checking in on process trees and so forth, it shows up with according structure, like these are workers and, and, and so forth. And hopefully we can nail all of this by Zeek 6, which should land next summer, if we don't get too distracted with other things. <laughs> And uh, let's see, um, this is the biggie right now, so this is really new, and we are hoping that we got most things right, but it really needs input, because the number of Z clusters I run in production is zero. So I, I 
I might be missing things that are completely obvious to Ashish and so forth in the audience, um, and that would be good to know. So for now, this is a request to please try this stuff out and tinker. This is the documentation. There is a fair amount. And just let, let us know what you find and what looks good, what's not, what's bugs, and so forth. In preparing the training, I found at least one bug, so we'll see about that. So that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christian. Um, you're going to be available for uh, demos over beers, right? More demos? Sure, yeah. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have time for just a question or two, and then we're going to take a break. We've got a lightning talk. Um, Yas, where are you? OK. You are up after the break. Um, and then we've got a few more talks. But uh, any questions for Christian before we take a break? Or do you want to wait for beers? Uh-oh, Dr. Oh. Smoot has a question for you. Oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll take the pull request, Smoot. <laughs> no, I'll, oh, you're going to make me do the work. I was wondering why you don't infer the role from the names. Yeah, you know. If um, they match. It, great idea. Uh, it smells like a little too much magic, but I don't know if anybody ever uses different names. So it's a great point. Well, um, and it would also prevent them from, you know, naming it manager and having yeah, the, the role be worker. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, great idea, great idea. This this whole ability to basically leave out lots of detail about instances um, got added pretty late. And one of the things I didn't show you right now is when you sort of spread it out across multiple instances, you have to put in a little bit more stuff. But it wouldn't touch the naming, so it would work for that. Yeah, great thought. Okay, folks, out of respect of the virtual attendees who are probably keeping a closer eye on the schedule than we are, because we can just kind of hang out here together. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back at 3 o'clock. So the good news is you get, well, bad news is you get a short break. Good news is we end early. How's that? All right, 3 o'clock. We'll see you back here. There is this guy, and it's still hot. <laughs>